Hello everyone, it's Jabari here. Today I will be discussing something a little out of the norm as it primarily focuses on a term rather than any types of historical events or facts. Over the years, I've had several people approach me with unfavorable comments towards my usage of the term Sub-Saharan Africa, which was quite shocking to me as I've never even looked at it once as a negative term or anything remotely warranting any type of offense to any degree. However, after countless testimonies and just lots of pondering the fact in general, I've come up with a few reasons why I think that problem exists and what I think should be done about it. So there are two primary reasons that I find are the most popular triggers of offense. The first one is the fact that the term Sub-Saharan Africa includes the prefix Sub. Complaints usually rest on the fact that Sub means below. It is then compared to words with negative connotations, for example, subpar, submissive, or substandard. However, Sub does not always have negative connotations attached to it. Below does not always mean less than or inferior to. For example, submarine, or subterranean, or subway, or subconscious. All of these words denote things that are below or under something, but not necessarily in a negative way. Sub-Saharan seems to follow this trend, denoting that the region south of the Sahara on the map is collectively considered Sub-Saharan, because on a map, it is indeed below the Sahara. There's nothing innately negative about that terminology, but many seem to look at it as though it implies that the region is inferior, less important, or below the significance of North Africa. This is simply untrue. In fact, ancient Egyptians viewed Sub-Saharan Africa in the completely opposite manner, calling the lands Upper, since it was the source of the Nile River. This is why the southern regions of the river were known as the Upper Nile, and the northern part was known as the Lower Nile. It is fairly common for places or regions to be named specifically for where they exist on a map, like South Africa. Perhaps the most direct parallel to Sub-Saharan Africa is Baja California. In Spanish, Baja means short, which is a synonym for below. It is used in an identical context to Sub-Saharan Africa since it is below California on a map. That is the only reason for this designation. Another point of offense with the term rests in the basis of Sub-Saharan being used to describe a separate region of Africa and that this shouldn't be done at all. This complaint seems to make some believe that it carries some sort of political or ideological connotation in an attempt to separate the history and achievements of North African civilizations in an effort to attribute them to civilizations outside of Africa instead and disassociate them from the region of Africa that is primarily inhabited by black people. While this argument does carry a fair degree of weight, it is not innately used in that context. The reason is primarily geographical, considering the bulk of North Africa is covered in desert, and by desert I mean the largest hot desert in the entire world. With that being said, it only makes sense to distinguish that part of Africa from the rest. Also, with this vastly different geography comes vastly different cultures, with North Africa being almost entirely Islamic. 93% of the inhabitants of North Africa and the Middle East collectively are Muslims, while just 30% of the Sub-Saharan African population are Muslims. While Sub-Saharan Africa did possess many large and powerful caliphates like Mali and Songhai, those parts of Sub-Saharan Africa that were Islamic typically have close contact with North African populations and historically have been relatively independent from the great Islamic caliphates of the Mediterranean world. The vast majority of Sub-Saharan African caliphates converted peacefully and for the most part were only Islamic on paper. The ruling elites of these states were Muslims, likely for political and economic reasons. Their conversion allowed them to have control over lucrative trade routes as well as immunity to enslavement. However, the general populations of most sub-Saharan African states remain largely practitioners of indigenous religions until relatively recently in history. In addition to religious and cultural differences, most North Africans are phenotypically distinct from the peoples of sub-Saharan Africa. The majority of North Africans have physical features more comparable to other Mediterranean peoples and Arabs, such as olive or tan skin, straight or wavy hair, and prominent noses. The majority of Sub-Saharan Africans, on the other hand, have much darker skin, flatter and broader noses, and woolly hair. 
Of course, these descriptions are all approximations, and by no means am I implying that they are the absolute rules of collective populations. The genetic and phenotypic diversity of Africa is immense. However, to put it more bluntly, the overwhelming majority of North African populations aren't what we consider to be black people, according to modern Western classifications of race, while those of Sub-Saharan Africa are. This is similar to how we refer to West Asia as the Middle East or Near East. This region has historically had marked cultural and phenotypical differences among its people in comparison to its European or East Asian counterparts, while drawing more parallels and analogies to North Africa, which is why the two regions are usually put into the same category when describing regions of the world. In conclusion, Sub-Saharan African history has endured quite a turbulent experience, from the transatlantic slave trade to the colonization by European powers in the 19th century as well as unnatural borders and subsequently the corruption, civil wars, and poverty that followed in much of the continent. This is further exacerbated by the world's collective lack of interest or inclusion of African history and culture into mainstream culture, education, and media, which usually only focuses on negative aspects or wildlife. With all that being said, many people of African descent have become highly sensitive to any and everything that could further devalue Africa's people, culture, and history, which in some cases has led to extreme measures. The aversion to the word sub-Saharan is but one of these, a harmless term that has been dubbed as a negative one by some people despite the fact that it has no negative connotations attached to it whatsoever, and is generally accepted as a valid and non-offensive term by virtually all educational institutions. With that being said, it is best to keep the problems where they belong and not create new ones that didn't exist in the first place. We are better off focusing on the actual problems and bringing solutions to light. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a comment, like, and subscribe if you want more videos like these. For sources, check out my website, linked below. If you'd like to support future projects, you can do so there as well, or by clicking the join button below, or by becoming a patron. I hope you all enjoyed the video, thanks for watching as usual, and always remember, we don't come from nothing.